Uh, actually, at the moment we are at a uh, former NATO base, Cold War Air Base. We got the question in 2012 to think about kind of piece of furniture on this uh, vacant airbase. Hi. Hi. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Go. We thought, yeah, it would be useless to make a piece of furniture. So we started with a collaboration between Frank Havermans and us on the site here, working. This is a Trojan horse. Because nothing may be built newly on the airbase in this nature area. And because it's not a house, it doesn't have fundaments. We could easily make something a mobile. So, okay, a mobile sculpture was also the solution to make something. And we came up with a kind of mobile sculpture that it refers to the Cold War, but isn't it literally. It's actually a kind of inverse object of the strike fighters. The strike fighters were, of course, high speed. We're going fast forward to the runaway. While this object is very slowly, it envisions a new time, but it refers to this uh, period. It's a, first of all a mobile sculpture as an art piece. But it offers also the possibility to stay inside of it with 10 people to work so you can easily turn this uh, mobile sculpture into a working place the table comes out of the roof so while it's usually looking as a kind of spaceship it becomes a kind of working station while we get the table out of the roof and we can easily switch chairs to the front and make a working space of it. So you can work here with uh, 10 to 12 people while riding along the airbase and viewing the surroundings. It always connects a kind of vision on a larger scale what to do with a vacant airbase. We've been working here for one and a half year on site starting with just the space which was left vacant and there was nobody at the airbase anymore we just got the key and we had to come up with ideas and we started working from out of the location and came up in the end with this sculpture one and a half year later When you're here, you can feel why this is not a good location most of the year for working. Okay, yeah. Uh, unless you have um, a space in the space. Yeah. Because it's, it's cold and humid. Yeah. So we needed a space in, in this space for it to, to it's, make it's it. And a space within the space. Uh, yeah. yeah. So this, the, this is its natural habitat. Yeah. And there it's its natural habitat. We've been making it 
in, having in mind how it would be when the doors are opening mm -hmm. and how it would be when it's exploring the airbase over there along the landing stage. So we thought it would be good to create a base on the airbase, a new base to, to work and to produce new things. So the space can easily be transformed into a kind of working space. So whatever you like, you can sit here and have a meeting. So, and once you finish with it, you just put the table in the ceiling again, so automatically. And although the design may look high-tech, it's completely low-tech, it's all wood. There is, uh, there is nothing high-tech on it, actually. No. No. It's funny. You're Only the way it moves with... Uh, there is a, um, a generator on top of the roof and that generates the electricity for the tracks. Nowadays, people want to change everything within a split second. So they said, we are going to demolish the runaway. And this runaway is three kilometers long. It's a, a typical uh, NATO airbase uh, runaway. So we said it, it would be crazy to demolish it. So what we try to do is uh, to make a mobile sculpture that connects the shelter and the, the landing strip. And in this way, we make use of the landing strip and it's now actually part of the installation. And now uh, there is no discussion anymore to get this runaway demolished, so it will stay there as well. First of all, it's art. So it's a mobile sculpture. And second, it offers a kind of place to work, but it isn't predefined. So it's not an office or whatever, it's kind of other way of working and opening uh, up. And yeah, you it? mind? By moving over the airbase you get the best of this location, whereas inside it's just an enclosed space. By having this, this mobile sculpture you can explore the entire base, the entire airbase. You get great views by just working here. It moves around and uh, the view always shifts. This is actually used quite often, actually used for office space. It's part of the collection of region of the Netherlands and people can just phone the province and book it as long as they are doing research. There have been people here working on the operation room of the future, for hospital innovation. People were yeah. working here exploring the mobile operating room. There have been people working here who are designing the flying car. Actually, we already built a flying car and trying to improve it. This place, this sculpture gets people out of their typical way of doing things. Their comfort zone. It gets yeah. them out of their comfort zone and yeah. become more playful typically. And their, their attitude, their way of doing at the beginning of coming here is very different than when they finish their day. You see a big shift in uh, their explorative ways of behaving actually. So usually they start coming inside and start working and uh, along the table and at the end of the day they are standing on top of the roof of this object and uh, riding along the airbase. So it generates lots of freedom. What we like is this idea of not just talking but also testing things because we are inside a huge bunker and in combination with the object. But, but for example, the flying car is a good example of uh, the way you can use the landing strip to come up with new innovative ideas. When you are in a place that doesn't seem to have a particular time or 
design of a place you can locate, and then an herb base that could be also another thing. Is that something that uh, allows you to just go freely on your process of thinking, or does it affect you in a way that since you are not rooted into something you know, what were you thinking when you were seeing people around here just... There, there happen always unexpected things, like the one thing that we were surprised to see is how much people like to go on, on the roof actually, how much they enjoy it. The wonder that an artwork generates is actually part of what makes people more playful and explorative, I think. It challenges them to also try out new things more, to explore more. Because I make a drawing every day, so I have thousands of them. I try to come up with all these thinking models. So, let's say, so what if tables and chairs don't exist anymore, what are we going to do? This is the end of sitting. And basically the end of sitting was a vision on the office of 2025, on the workspace of the future. We try to start from the body and make a landscape of many different possibilities for supported standing, leaning, hanging. Actually I can show you yeah. one because it's yeah. in here. Yeah. You do this a day, then you're using your your biggest muscles, your big leg muscles, rather than just uh, not using them, it allows you to, to switch positions if you have an entire landscape. So these are only a few possibilities for support standing here. Uh, so. <laughs> uh, but if you have many, then that can create a shift from one place to another place over the day. And people keep moving around uh, much more. I'm a philosopher also at the University of Amsterdam. And it was also related to this philosophical project that I'm doing, which is basically about affordances, action possibilities that the environment offers. And we wanted to make an entire landscape of possibilities for supported standing, leaning, hanging. And basically, to visualize that philosophical worldview uh, that we are embodied minds in a landscape of affordances. What we always do in any project, we always look into the history of the place. As for the end of sitting, we look into the history of the office. And there we saw that if you go back to antiquity, people were offering their services on the market square. So then the office was basically standing, hanging out on the market square, standing and being present when your services were required. That shifted over time and that people started to be seated from breakfast table to schools and universities. And that is just something recent, that's something that came only in the last century. Do people actually work in here? They've been working in here mm -hmm. when, the, when it was there, it was a temporary installation. And also here there was a scientific part to it actually. We had human movement scientists exploring how people were working in this landscape and how they felt working in it as compared to a conventional open office setting. What they reported is that it was better for their well-being than a conventional open office setting that their legs got more tired, but that they felt more mentally active. And what was also observed is that they switched positions more often, which of course was what we hoped, that they would change positions more often than at a conventional space. So we are not this kind of artists or architects who are just focusing on making nice things. We want to come up with an agenda, in this case the end of sitting, or other vacant spaces like we have been making in Maastricht, set the building on fire. Actually to show the possibilities, just to explore the possibilities on fire safety, because the world is now limited by fire safety. We are used to decrease danger, in, in this case we increase the danger and make people aware. And also the firemen where we collaborated with, that there is much more potential in vacant buildings and we have 10,000 of them in the Netherlands. Yeah. 
That's what we pointed in the Venice Biennial. Uh, it was 2010, so the crisis was just arrived and we said we should, you should focus also on the heritage because there are 10,000 vacant buildings in the Netherlands and that's what we showed here. These are just not offices, not boring offices along the highway, but heritage in the middle of the city centers like churches, postal offices, schools, hospitals, bunkers, fortresses, anything. 10,000 already in a small country like the Netherlands. We actually wanted to extend it also to vacant world because there are many vacant buildings in the world. At this moment, nobody focused on this topic, but we wanted to show the potential. So we made the Dutch Atlas of Vacancy, an enormous book that showed the potential, in this case, how you can make fire inside buildings. And later on we made Fire Man uh, walk with us. So it's continuously focusing on possibilities. These thinking models are on a certain kind of topic trying to, to explore the possibilities. We continuously try to come up with this kind of ideas, every day a new idea. This is the bunker, the cut through bunker. So this was a monument, it took us five years to cut through it. to ask these questions. So going radically through a bunker, actually ask yourself the question, what means a monument? And in that way, uh, you even experience the monument in a much more interesting way than just leave it standing. So make people aware of the surroundings by our interventions. Yeah, and at the moment we are now completing our largest project. This was a place where all the delta works have been tested. This is a 250 meter long flume, basin where enormous waves went through to test how the, the delta works on the scale one to one. So waves of three meter high. We are now going to cut pieces out of it and then turn them 90 degrees so make actually the feeling it was all about being indestructible. In 1953 we got a disaster in Holland uh, that a big part of the Netherlands was flooded. That's the reason why they make all this kind of testing model to avoid this situation again. So what we wanted to do with this monument is also make this idea of being indestructible tangible. And at the same time, we destruct this monument. Here's a human being in the end, so it's an enormous installation in water. This is again searching for the tension between something that is meant to be indestructible that you completely destruct it. So it was testing on scale one to one. Other things were only... Scale one to 10 or one to yeah. 20, and you start maybe one to 1,000. Our work is always connecting different scales, and that's really important. These chairs, actually, they, <laughs> these, they were built one-on-one, -on -one, scale one-on-one, -on -one, so they were actually tested one-on-one -on -one different models. First feel it without the planks. <laughs> yeah. and, um, just, just sit on the... Sit on one of these? So, here? Yes. So, just... Sit, okay. Up, like this. First like this. Okay. Okay. And then flip the... You are sitting ah. more in a straight position. You have to, because you're... Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the view here is amazing. And especially when you go along the landing strip. It's a three kilometers long strip, so you, you open your mind in a very natural way because you are part of an enormous environment. We always try to look very carefully to the context to respond to a context and to add something completely new or to remove something. We believe if you want to make really good site-specific artworks or land art or whatever, 
you should be really aware of the context and respond to it and it can be in a radical way taking everything away but with the knowledge from the site and not just the knowledge by reading but by experimenting by discovering <laughs>